What if I told you that this stick here is actually a productive fruit tree? And by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to plant it and have a bountiful harvest in your backyard. This is a bare root fruit tree. It's actually a cherry tree that I'm about to plant. The only problem is I've never actually planted a bare root fruit tree, so I need a little bit of help. And we have Tom Spellman of Dave Wilson Nursery. Kevin. Welcome to the homestead. Thank you, sir. Cherry from your nursery. Absolutely. So, so bare root, what is that? Bare root is a tree that we have grown for one or two years in the field. We harvest those with uh, uh, machines in the fall and we then send them out to farmers, to retail nurseries, wholesale nurseries, for them to either sell as a bare root or containerize or plant out to their fields. This is a beautiful, clean, disease-free two-year tree. Mm -hmm. The variety is Royal Crimson, which is a low chill cherry adapted to the San Diego climate. It's self-fruitful. It doesn't need a cross-pollinator. So this is the perfect variety for your planting. So Tom, I've got my cherry, but if yep. someone wants to know, what do I even choose? If I want to grow a peach, a cherry, a, a plum, whatever one I pick, how do I know what variety to actually choose? Well, the most important thing, Kevin, is that you do your homework. So you're going to research your varieties and understand your climate. Mm -hmm. So once you know, hey, I get an average of two to 300 chill hours in my area. So you're going to look for varieties that fall into that classification. So just make sure that the varieties you're choosing fall within the chill hour requirements of the area that you're growing in. So in my case with this cherry, because I'm in Southern California, I don't really get more than 400 chill hours, which is basically temperatures below about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, but above 32, so above freezing. Right. So if I'm growing, let's say this was an 800 chill hour variety, I'm only getting 400 chill hours, I'm gonna have a really hard time growing this tree. You're, you're basically, the tree's gonna grow and survive for a few years, you're not gonna get any fruit. Sure. So, you know, the old fashioned variety like Bing cherry, mm -hmm. high chill variety, you can grow it in the high desert, you can grow it in the mountains, you can grow it in areas that get a lot of chill, can't grow it in San Diego. Can't do this with it. This no. variety was hybridized for this exact climate. Perfect. So it's a two to 300 hour variety. So variety selection is your first step to clear when you're figuring out how to plant a bare root fruit tree. Because trust me, the last thing you want to do, whether potted or bare root, is to put a tree in the ground, have a couple years go by and realize really you picked the wrong variety. But after that, we were in my orchard right now. Let's talk sun. Let's talk soil. Sure. Exposure is important. Full sun exposure for fruit trees whenever you're trying to accumulate sugars. Mm -hmm. So I want sweet cherries. I want sweet peaches, I want sweet navel oranges. So I'm gonna choose the area that gets the best possible sun exposure for all of those varieties where I wanna develop high sugars. So if we look at my orchard here, this is my north side of the property, mm -hmm. obviously getting a lot of southern exposure. Yes. On almost all of these, I want a sweet fruit. You might say that the lime, the lemon, I'm okay with it not, but still the sun's gonna be perfectly sure, fine. absolutely. So in almost all cases, you're gonna to wanna to put a fruit tree in as much sun as you can get. Yes. Okay, got it. And then now soil, why don't we head on back in the backyard where we're gonna plant this do and it. do a little test. Okay, Tom, so we're gonna talk soil. So I'm gonna pop this back in the bucket. Yeah, we'll keep, keep the, the roots, roots nice and nice hydrated. And moist. Obviously you wouldn't do that before like hours and hours and hours, but no, when you're about you to plant it. Wanna make sure that, that it's pre-moistened before it goes into the into the ground. Okay, cool. I'll grab the shovel. I'm thinking right about here Looks for good. the cherry. And talk to me about soil because one thing I've run into in the past when planting all sorts of different types of fruit trees is maybe my soil is not the right type and how would I know? You know, the most important consideration, like we said earlier, is really drainage. Yeah. If you've got good drainage, pretty much everything else you can supplement. Now, if you think you have something in your level to a toxic level, a metal or an element that, you know, is uh, going to be detrimental to plant growth, I don't think you have any of that here. I know I don't, I so, did a test, yeah. yeah. So you're fine, just let, let, you know, we just wanna make sure that we're planning on a little bit of a rise and that we have the gopher situation under control and that we have good drainage. And to get good drainage, what you do is just something called a percolation test. You'd fill this up with a bucket of water. If it drains in about 15, 20 minutes, that's good drainage. Yeah, any less than a couple hours, you're fine. Okay. If it's more than that, you know, four, five, six hours, then you wanna mound up a little higher. If it's water sitting in there overnight, probably wanna choose another location. Okay, got it. So that's basically all you really need to know about soil. So when we get into the planting, let me grab our cherry, Tom. Talk to me about this. So. When I see this, it's a, it's a little bit more intimidating, I guess, than a containerized plant. Because mm -hmm. the roots, of course, are, are kind of crawling through that soil already. Right. So I go, oh, the roots are kind of coming out this way. 
Do I just do that? Like, how do I even start to think about this? Well, you know, we're we're gonna uh, put this in inside the basket and then we're gonna backfill with soil. So the roots are basically, this is a little bit one-sided as far as the root system. Yeah. That's okay, it's all okay. gonna balance out. Just got, got a little more cut on this side than on this side. So we just wanna make sure that we can accommodate that full root system within inside the basket and, and plant it right to the depth where it was before. So we can see that little bit of difference there in, in, in color on the, on the trunk where mm -hmm. the roots just start. That's the level where it was in our ground. Sure. So we wanna come back to that level with the graft about two to three inches above the soil line. Okay, and that's the important part, right? Because with, with almost any of these deciduous fruit trees like a cherry or a apricot or something, you have really sort of two trees. You have what's called the rootstock, which is effectively just what's below the soil. You yeah. called it the motor of the plant, which the I really, yeah. I love that analogy. And then you have this emanation point, which is a graft. That's the actual variety we want to grow. Yes. And so you really can't be burying your graft point below the soil. No, if you bury the graft, you're gonna have a crown rot or a collar rot problem. That tree's probably gone within 18 months to two years. Got it. So for good, healthy tree, you wanna make sure that that graft is two to four inches above grade. And this is just a protection against gophers. It's something we know we've had a problem with here at my homestead. And so this little mesh, it's like actually stainless steel, works really well to keep them from getting in. They might gnaw at, at it a little bit, but the core of that root structure will remain in place. Yeah. So amendments, do I just go straight in raw? Is that your preference? You know, um, Kevin, I like your soil. It, I do it, too. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's, good, <laughs> it's a good quality soil. I don't think we need to put any amendments directly in the soil. I am a big advocate of using all those amendments as a mulch on the surface. Okay. So we're gonna take the amendments that we would have put in the soil and use them on the top. It, it mimics nature, right? I mean, when Absolutely. you go to a forest, you see the, the leaf litter yes. across the surface. Yes. You're, you're, what animal is digging down and depositing compost 10 feet down? No, no, no. one really. So but, it's all but, filtering from you the know, top. All that organic material breaks down and those nutrients go right down into the soil and then those roots can make use of them and take them Perfect. off. Perfect. So are we just gonna kind of place this and backfill in? Is that Yeah, the let's dig it out a little bit wider on, on one side so we can get those roots in there. Yeah, let's dig out this side a little bit. Though. Yeah, that's perfect. And we wanna leave a little bit of the gopher basket exposed above the surface. Okay. So let's just go ahead and backfill that. So I'll just kick back, right? Yeah. So basically, we could leave this like this. We could prune it down. We could look for outward growing buds and, and prune it down to here and prune it down to, and to here. And, and then we can get our new growth up on top here. But honestly, for me, this, this structure, this slingshot, mm -hmm. is not where I want that growth to start. And why is that? Well, I want something lower. I mean, we've got three, three and a half feet of trunk here and a head that's gonna develop on top of that. Too tall. This this is production space down here. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna I don't wanna start this tree this high. So I'm gonna choose a couple of these buds that are gonna grow back out to the west side and I'm gonna cut it right there. Got it. So we've got one coming out this way, one here, one, one here. There. So we're gonna accessing the sun. We're gonna develop a new, you know, three or four branch scaffolding structure on this. Sure. After one year's worth of growth, we're gonna come back and cut that down in half again. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna develop our finished structure off of that. So you create a nice vase sort of structure. Absolutely. So here's an example. This is actually, um, it's actually four pairs in one. Yes. But it's an example of another way you could get a bare root tree with a little bit more structure on it. Yes. And in this case, let's not make the cuts, but how would we prune this if we were to plant something that looked more like this at the start? So this is a true multiple budded tree. So it has uh, four different varieties of Asian pear on it, all varieties that can be productive in this area. What we want to do is with each one of these lateral branches is an individual graft. In order to grow any kind of a multiple bud, we need to make sure that we bring this back for our in our initial pruning to a balance. Okay. So this graft is the most vigorous. Here's the second most vigorous. Here's the third. Here's the weakest. And that's by size so of? Diameter the, yeah. of, of the graft itself. Sure. So we want to consider where do we really want this to, to restructure and scaffold at? I like it about here. So I would make that first cut on the wheat graft right about there and then follow along with an outward facing bud on each one of these as we went around. You know what? So how about this? Why don't I do the prune and you tell me if I'm right or not? So I'll okay. ask you before I cut. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm establishing my weakest. And so I'm going to say this, I've got a bud coming out. Exactly. So, so I'm going to go 45 degree angle right about there. Right. Cool. So I'm going to cut. Perfect. And now this is what, two feet-ish or so? Mm -hmm. So I'll come to my second weakest. And I might say, 
I mean, frankly, I would look at probably this one because this one's not really going yep. in the right direction. I like it. So I'd come right there. Perfect. This guy here, we probably want to go right there, right? I think I'd go a little bit lower. You go a little lower. I think so I'd maybe come here? In right about there. Yeah. And is that because it's more vigorous? So you need yes. to cut it down just a touch more? So now more? it's more balanced structurally with, with these. Oh, I see. Three. So in that case, this is obvious that I'm going right there. Right. Yeah. So it does seem a little intimidating, Tom, to buy a tree and immediately effectively decapitate it like we've done here well, and I've, done here. You know, I've dealt with this in, in my career hundreds of times and people think, well, I just paid so many dollars for this tree and I just cut my investment in half. But what they're gaining by doing this is they're gaining the ability to manage that tree at a small size for forever going forward. And that's the whole point of this backyard orchard culture idea is you don't want 10,000 peaches, you want right. 50 peaches, right. 50 limes, 50 lemons spread out really nicely throughout the course of the exactly. year. So coming back to our beautiful decapitated cherry, mm -hmm. what's our next step here? So we would um, we would want to get this uh, irrigated in. Okay. We would want to uh, create a basin out around our gopher basket and we would want to get some uh, whitewash on it. Let's do it. So we have a little bit of a basin here dug out. We're really just hilling soil up around it, Tom? Yeah, all we want to do is create a little bit of a dam so that we can irrigate and the water goes down into the root structure where we want it. Okay, so I've got just a trickle mm -hmm. and this could be for quite some time, right? You can let this run for an hour, two hours, you know, you just don't want it to overflow. If it overflows, sure. turn it down a little bit or turn it off and come back and hit it again in a half an hour. Then I've got the unthinkable, which is painting a tree. I think when people hear that, they go, I don't understand. Well, um, you got to remember, these trees have been grown in a nursery environment where they're literally six, eight, 12 inches apart in field rows. Yep. And there's, you know, one row, four feet away from another row, four feet away from another row. So each of these trees is self shading and shading all the other trees around it. And now we brought it to the great outdoors mm -hmm. and put it right out here in the full sun. So now that young tender bark is very susceptible to sunburn issues. So for the first season in the ground, we want to give it the benefit of the doubt and protect that from any sun damage. Got it. And so we're using this organic tree paint. So oftentimes those tree paints, those old ones are like made out of latex or something like that, which we want to avoid yeah. personally. Yeah, this is, a, this is a really nice product. It breathes well. You know, it's not like you're painting a fence or a house. All you're doing is protecting this tree from sunburn. You can paint right over that top right cut. Right over that cut. And we cut it 45 degrees on this particular one. It, usually that's what's recommended, but why is that? Well, there's several reasons. I mean, you want to cut it uh, at, a, at an angle above a bud that you want to grow out. Each one of these little nodes on the trunk here is a vegetative bud. So we'll get a flush of growth from each one of those. Yep. It's more important really with a, with a large cut, like on a, on a stump or a large branch, because you don't want water to sit on that. that I can, see. That can cause some decomposition and cause some uh, issues uh, with um, die back down into that uh, main trunk. So if you cut it off at an angle, nothing ever sits there, nothing ever gets into the system. So after this, let's, let's just assume I've watered this up as well. How do I then set this rest of this tree up for success after the initial watering? Gotta put some sort of mulch over it, right? Yeah, we'll get a mulch in um, right around the, the inside of the basin. A little bit, but not much in, within the gopher basket, but mostly out around the basket. Nice start, it's gonna keep the ground temperatures cooler. It's gonna give us some bioactivity. It's gonna make better use of our irrigation water. Yeah, and this is different from, you know, they say like avoid doing a mulch volcano or whatever. We're not really putting it up against the no. tree itself. No, we're, you know, you can still see the soil right here in, in, the, in the gopher basket area. So yeah. we're not, we've got, four or five inches out here, we've got virtually less than a half an inch right here around the trunk. Yeah, so this is a really clever way to do it. Now, our bare root tree is in the ground. In the first season, let's say, what does someone have to think about? All you wanna do is, this is basically, you're gonna walk away from this now, irrigate it every couple of weeks, every three weeks. Once it gets hot, the tree starts to grow. You're gonna add a little bit more frequency to the irrigation. All you wanna do is grow that structure out for at least another five or six months, then you can start to make a couple of cuts on it if you want. You can actually just grow it out for the whole season and do your pruning next fall. Got it. So there's there's no hurry about it. At that point, we're gonna do just like we did with that pair when we're gonna make some final decisions on the low scaffolding and we're gonna, the next flush of growth. So for the season 2025, that's gonna give us a nice finished form on it. Got it, yeah, so it's a bit of setup in an orchard, but trust me when I say, just have to look at my front yard, the benefits 
far outweigh this initial patience. And there is a little bit of patience to it. So Tom, thank you so much for coming down. Truly an honor to have you here. If you wanna see our fruit tree playlist, you can check out one of these videos. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.